Hi, Val Curtis here, and I want to thank you for joining us for another episode of Friday Harbor Live, where our brilliant and talented islanders are sharing their skills and stories with island kids of all ages. Um, we want to thank the Family Resource Center for sponsoring today's episode and the Community Foundation. If you get a chance, go drive by the, the Family Resource Center. They are starting to move in. They have raised the roof and it is absolutely beautiful. They are just getting started on what's probably gonna be close to a two to three week migration <laughs> into their new space. But do um, kind of give a drive by and, and take a, a peek um, from afar <laughs> right now. Um, and also thank you to the Community Foundation. They have the Response Hub, which allows you to help organizations on the island by donating, volunteering, or if you're an organization in, uh, in need of assistance, you can go to sjisland.recovers.org. So today we have Ranger David is back with us and we just love having him on board. He brings so much creativity and of course a love of our natural world um, to all of us. So are you ready for him? Cause here he comes. Are you ready for the countdown? I know you love the countdown. And three, two, one. Woo! There he is. Hey, Hi. hey guys. <laughs> How are you doing? Thanks again, Val. We're doing great. Uh, we had a lot of fun last week and I think we'll have even more fun this week because it, it, it's uh, going to be a little bit of a guessing game for the audience. We're going to play some games that then they can also play with their family uh, or friends uh, at a little bit of a distance. Uh, so um, uh, we're looking forward to it. I think we'll have a lot of fun. And I'll explain what that is uh, once we get going. Awesome. Well, I will let you have at it and I'll see you later. Great. Bye. Bye bye. So I also have a special guest today to introduce. Um, here at the park, we have seasonal people come in in the summer uh, to help with everything we do. They do the brunt of the work to keep the parks really nice. Um, and uh, one of those senior park aides is Caitlin Kaminsky, and she's going to join us today. We're going to play a game. So I'm going to introduce her quickly, and then uh, I'll, I'll come back and explain the game. And we're going to kind of shift back and forth. That's why I don't have a mask on, so we have to keep that six-foot distance thing happening. So I move out of the screen and then she'll move in. We'll go back and forth and we're gonna be doing that all day. So um, that's just the way it is these days. So here's Caitlin to say hi. Hey guys, I'm Caitlin and I'm looking forward to joining you guys today. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do um, is uh, we're gonna kind of do a drawing game. And the whole idea of the drawing game is I start to draw an animal. I draw sort of part of an animal. And you guess what that animal is. And the whole reason for doing this, I mean, it's just fun to practice drawing. But remember last week I talked about how important observation is both to artists and to scientists. And so this is a way to practice those observation skills. And so what you're trying to do is figure out what is the part of an animal that really is unique to that animal and how do I draw that? And you'll see uh, that you don't have to be really great at drawing. You just have to be have an idea of what it is you're trying to show. Because you'll see my drawings, like I was a cartoonist for a long time before I was a ranger and still my drawings are, well, you'll see, they're not very great but I will work to convey what it is, that, what's the essence of a certain animal. And then Caitlin, each time I draw a little bit more of that, she'll guess and we'll you know, see how long it takes her to guess what animal I had in mind. And by doing that, we'll, we'll start to understand, well, what is it that's the most unique quality of an animal and that's where the power of observation comes in. So you'll see what I'm talking about. This is something you can play with your brother, your sister, your parents, neighbors, if you keep a distance, you know. So you can even do it online with somebody back and forth. You know, you guys are all about texting and stuff like that. So I'm gonna set us up a little bit. The screen's gonna go black for a minute because I'm gonna put this in. 
and then I'm going to put in my first part of a drawing and kind of walk you through how we think about it. And then Caitlin and I are going to take turns back and forth. I'll do some drawing, she'll guess, you do some, you know, she'll do some drawing and I'll guess. And we'll see how that goes for a while. And while we're doing that, you can, if you have paper and pencil and you want to draw similar things, feel free to do that. It's, uh, you know, we won't see it, but you know, maybe you have someone in the room, you can play the game while we're playing the game. So I'm going to set it up and show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I drew, I hope you can see that pretty well, um, is it's the probably you'd guess the legs of something. But what is it the legs of? And you can't really tell. Um, you can't really tell until what that animal is until I do a little bit more of it. And so if I did, if I did a little bit more. I go up here and then I, I I do this and you know that's more information, but still that could be a dog or a cat or a goat. Uh, hard to know, and so I add a little bit more and say maybe I do this and you know okay that's not a goat. If I do this, then pointy ears, you're gonna say it's a cat, and that would be right and I could do the whiskers. But if I didn't do that, if instead I had done floppy ears, then it might look more like a dog. Okay, there's the eyes. Like I said, my drawings aren't very good, but you get the idea. There's something in each drawing that's gonna get you to the point of recognizing that of what it is and you'll guess it and then the person who you're playing with will say yeah that's it that's what i was trying to draw and then you switch and they draw and you guess so that's the fun part of it um one other thing that that i wanted to just mention as a as a i'm erasing it now so that's kind of why i'm distracted looking down but another thing that is a tool that you can use when you're in your guessing game. If somebody gets, you know, they can't figure it out, they guess and they guess and they guess and they can't figure it out. You can start to put in other things that will give them a clue. Like supposing I drew this and, 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 and I had no other thing that I could draw. I couldn't figure it out. Well, and then maybe I draw this and, and, and you still don't get it. And then what if, if I went, like this and drew something like that you might say oh it's something in the water because those are waves and that would be a clue so you can draw things that are the ho <clears throat> the home of the animal you're drawing or something that gives more information to the person you're playing the game with okay it's all again about powers of observation so if it's a home you want to make sure like you don't draw a deer in a bird's nest that like that would just be confusing um so that's kind of the game and uh we're gonna start i'm gonna have um caitlin jump in and do one for you guys um and i'll guess and we'll see and you can guess also as you're going along try to think what is she what is it that she's um trying to show us power of observation so think about what makes an animal unique and does the drawing you know, give you enough clues about which animal that is. So here's Caitlin again. She's going to have a, a go at it. Okay, you guys. So let me get set up here and I'll draw the first part to my animal that I'm going to start with. And we'll see how David does with this. He can guess. So you, you have the Oh, your pictures are over here. Because mm -hmm. when you're done, you, if I guess it, you can put these in there. Okay, okay. so that's my first Okay, part. so my guess, I'm looking at that, and it sure looks like a dog to me. Like, I see that's probably the nose of the dog. That's what I think it is. Is it a dog? It is not a dog. Ah! But let, me, let me give you a little more information. What do you guys think it is if it's not a dog? So she'll give a little more information, and we'll see if, if we can guess it. Okay. So maybe I'll give him that. 
And that. What do you think uh, it is now? Well, that looks a lot like my uncle, I'd say. That's oh, his wow. nose. And he's bald headed like I am. You wouldn't know because I wear the hat. I think that's my uncle. Okay, well, good guessing, but let me see. Let me add a little bit more to this animal to see if you can. Oh, okay. I didn't that. know what it is. That's a dodo bird. Okay, uh, we're getting closer. Okay. It's a bird. It's a bird. I got that it's part. It's a bird. And let's, uh, I guess I let's, need another hint. Let me add one more characteristic here. Ah, uh, that's the key. That's got to be a duck. It is a duck. Okay. Good job. So we have the picture that shows us a duck. Yeah. So here's a duck. Okay. And the thing that gave it away for me was the web feet, because we know that ducks, you see ducks on the water a lot. Oops, that's not that. Sorry about that. You see ducks on the water a lot. And they swim around, whereas other birds may be in the trees and on on land running around. The duck's web feet push them through the water a lot. And so that was a really good clue that she gave me that that's a duck. So good job. And now we go on to the next one. So I'll do one for you guys. All right. And Caitlin and I will trade places. So here we go. I'm going to try to draw it in place. See if I can do that. And I'm going to go like this. Yeah, so I'm drawing upside down, and I hope it's uh, uh, you can sort of see what it is. And that's that. And that's that. And that's that. How about that? What do you think that is? Okay, well, I'm going to guess that it's a dog. Well, could, I guess you're right. could be a dog because dogs have four legs, and that has four legs. I have to give you a little more information, um, and I'm going to give you that information. And... Uh, and that information. How about that? Okay, well, maybe maybe a a horse. It, yeah, it looks like it could be a skinny horse. Yeah, skinny That's horse. That's not what I meant it to be. So I'm gonna make the ear a little sharper. Not sure how the ear would go. See, that's the thing. I should have looked at some pictures to see. Um, how the ear looked. Um, and I don't know where any pictures are, but uh, not that. Um, so um, let me think about this. And oh, I know what I could probably do is this, and I think this will be distinctive. Yeah. How about that? Does that give you a clue? Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna guess. Maybe it's a fox. It is because it has this bushy tail. A fox is here. I have a bushy tail. You can see, like, my drawing maybe would have been a little bit better like this and put the nose on and things like that. So there's things you can do. Um, and if it, if she didn't guess that, I might have emphasized the bushy tail by going like that. So you can kind of play with your drawing, and that points out what what you think she should be looking at. So here's oh here's a picture of a fox, and you can see that that's what we're talking about. We have these all over the island, as you guys know, and there's that bushy tail that's characteristic of a fox. They have sharp little ears and nose, and the bushy tail tells you it's a fox and not a dog or a coyote or something like that. Okay, Caitlin's up. She's going to try oh, one. All right. Let's see if I can draw it while it's in here. Okay, so my first clue is going to be Okay, let's see. <laughs> David can guess. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a that looks like an eye of a bird right there, and the beak is open. That's what I think. Okay, well, not quite, but let's see. Let me give you another clue here. Um, that's a walrus, huh? I think. Yeah, like that could be the nose. Yeah, I don't okay. know. I thought, I don't know. Okay. Give me another clue. Ah. I think I know, Mel, I think that is a koala. Closer. We're getting closer. Let's okay. see, this might give it away. Oh, okay. That looks like an angrier, more dangerous bear than a koala. So I think that might be like a grizzly bear? Yeah, you're right. All right. Grizzly bear. So see all the clues she gave you is that when you see a grizzly, by the way, this is super important. And we're going to talk. I'll come onto the screen here for a second and talk about this. When you see a grizzly bear or any bear, which fortunately we don't have on the island, but if you're ever in a place and you're hiking and you, and you come across a bear, you don't wanna mess with the bears. You wanna stay a long way away from the bears because they are super dangerous. They don't see very well either. So they think you might be you know, trouble and they might wanna attack you just because they're strong, they can attack anything. So if you see a bear, you just, you don't shriek and scream because then they think, oh, maybe that's a little, you know, a, a little snack food. Um, you just quietly back away, really quiet, step by step, and you'll be okay. So bears are something that you don't want to mess with. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we learn about more other animals. Okay, so my turn to do a drawing. I'm going to pull this out and put this in or hold this and um, see if I can come up with something that'll stump Caitlin. Uh, so here's this, we'll put this in here. If I can get that to stay, I'm gonna put it up this way. Maybe that'll work better for this one. Um, and so, oops, not really working very well. Maybe I'm gonna grab that top of that, hold that, okay. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm drawing something like that. Uh, I'll draw that part of it too. Um, wh what do you think it is? Oh, wow. Maybe. I know I'm not giving her enough information, by the way. Maybe a tree. Oh, she got that it was a tree. Okay. So um, if that's a tree, then this one's going to be easier for her. Uh, than I thought, but that's okay. Sometimes you get it right away, which is cool. So there's that, and there's that, and there's this. What do you think it is? Uh, maybe some sort of a bird, bird of some It is sort? some sort of a bird. What kind of a bird do you see? And again, it gets back to the observation. What kind of a bird do you see on trees that stand on the side of the tree like that woodpecker it is a woodpecker and you don't so woodpecker and they now what i'm doing if someone didn't get that i'd i'd make little like pieces of wood flying out of the tree as they go rat a tat tat how they do that without getting a headache is kind of an interesting mystery but so here is a picture of pull that out it's a picture of a woodpecker. Um, this is the kind we have here quite a bit. So if you see that red, uh, and I always forget whether it's pileated. Is, it, is that what you say? I just call it a pileated. Pileated and some, I don't know if it's pileated or pileated, but that's the woodpecker. It's around here quite a bit and they're really fun to see because they have that bright red head. So that's what that is. And what they're doing on the tree Mostly it'll be on dead trees. That's what they like the most because dead trees have a lot more bugs in them. And what they're doing is chipping out uh, the, the bark so they can get right underneath the bark and get to the, 
the the bugs that they like to eat, which is again more of them on a dead tree. Um, so that's what they're doing. And so you learn something about them when you see that rare behavior. You always want to ask why. What is it they're doing? that's unlike other birds and what does it make them special? So that's part of the reason that we do this observing and learning about these animals. All right, uh, Caitlin's gonna try another one, try to stump me again. All right, Let's see how I do. So this is an animal that we see here on San Juan Island. Okay, that's got to be a bunny rabbit. Okay, it's you're getting there close. Let's see if I can. That uh, looks like the propeller on my boat. But, okay, well okay. we're thinking animals, animals here, but let's uh, see let if me, I can I'll give guess, them another I'll guess clue. something. That you're doing a fox like I did, but just from the front. Could be a fox, but let me see if I can give you another clue. Okay. Oh, big oh. eyes. Big eyes and big ears. I think that might be, and it's on the island, you said? It is on the island. And did we see one this morning? We did. We, with... You know what we saw? So I'm going to say that's a deer. You're correct. Okay. It's a deer. In fact, we saw this morning a baby deer with, see the spots? The big eyes are like the babies have really big eyes as big as their nose and uh, big ears. That helps them hear things so they can stay safe and run away when they see something dangerous because they don't have a good way to fight very many things. And then they have the babies have these these dots and that helps them camouflage themselves and and hide out. So um, a lot of times uh, the babies will have those dots because they need to hide. They can't run away as fast as their mothers and their mothers might leave them and run away. And if that happens, that the mothers run away just leave the baby and, and and go away and give them some privacy and they'll reunite. They'll get back together. So you don't want to, you know, if you find a little baby deer by itself, probably the mom's nearby and the baby's just hiding because they can't run as fast. The mom probably ran and you didn't even see her. She ran so fast. So um, that's, uh, that's that. Okay. I'm going to do um, one more. And we'll see, how are you guys doing with this? Are you guys guessing faster than I can guess? If That would be good if you are. Some of you are, I'm sure. And if you aren't, that's okay too, because uh, my drawings aren't very good, so I wouldn't expect you to get them right away. I'm gonna try one of my favorite animals here, and it's hard for me to draw. I'm gonna try doing it this way. Oh, that's... No wonder it's hard to draw. That's horrible drawing. Okay, we'll try this. Uh, we'll try that. Oops, there you go. That's what I'm starting with. Hmm, well, maybe it's a foot of some kind. I'm going to guess. So maybe a human. Well, it, the, you know, if you knew my cartoons, you would think that because that's what my human feet normally look like. But not... Not really, so I'm gonna make a little bit more information on on the foot if I can, and and maybe oh here we go now it's drawing that's better. Uh, I'm not sure how to draw this obviously, so I may be confusing her a little bit. But I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this and go uh, way over here and way up here and. Do that. How about that? Well, maybe those are kind of like flippers, so maybe a seal. So it's not a seal, but you're really close. Let me see if I can accentuate the difference, why it's not a seal. Uh, if I draw this part of it and I have some big flipper things back here as well. And then I draw this and this and 
this and this and this. <laughs> what is what do you think that is? Can we see that? Oh, I guess we have to put that yeah. down a little bit. Can you see what that is starting to look like? I can also draw this because he uh there you go. <laughs> that well, helps a little bit. Maybe since you have a through those back ones a sea lion. Yeah, so that's the thing. Some what's the difference? between a seal and a sea lion and if you have observed them a lot what you'll notice is that the sea lion has these back let me see if i can do this for you they have sort of legs in the back that they actually kind of walk up on the rocks with so they use their front fins and their back fins as legs and they kind of walk along. They drag, they're really big, heavy animals, so they, they stay on the ground, but they are upright. Their head is upright, they're sitting up like that, and they're using their legs, their fins, as legs. Um, that's a sea lion. And we have them come by here, the park, sometimes. Uh, and at Spiden Island, which is nearby, in the winter, they uh, like 40 or 50 of them just hang out there, which is really cool to see. Um, so that's sea lions. And you can think of the lion as the big animal. So the sea lion walks a little bit, sort of dragging their belly, but they walk that way. Whereas a harbor seal, which we see all over the place when you're down at the water, um, you know, Popeye down at the port, that's a harbor seal. And they have fins also, but they can't kind of turn that back fin around and walk with them. They, so when they come up, they just kind of scoot up on their belly. So they'll swim along and just jump up on the dock and slide into place and have a nap or onto rocks and have a nap. So they don't they don't actually articulate with their their fins as legs. So that's the difference between um, harbor seals or seals in general and sea lions. So that's why I drew that. Do you want to do one more and then maybe we'll shift over to yeah. uh, our um, rule of thumb? Thing? Yes. Okay. So, one more so she's gonna do one more animal, you guys. Let's see how David does here. I'm about to draw one of my favorite animals. Okay, so here we go. That's that same dog you drew the first time that was a duck. <laughs> okay, yeah, it could be, you're right, it could be a dog. Let's see if this will help you. Not much? Okay, maybe. It's a maybe. crab, it's a crab. I think that's a crab. Okay, well, not quite, but you're right, because it does crawl-ish on the ground. Maybe this will help you. Ah, that does help me. Uh, yep, that's a lizard. Close. The, okay, because they have close. this has got to be the tongue, and lizards smell with the end of their tongue. So they they stick their tongue out, and they can kind of smell what's there. Uh, it's kind of, um, it's interesting. Not just their nose, but their tongues can tell them what's nearby. Well, that's good. You're getting closer. This. Last part should maybe help you out even more. Okay, so just the same as a lizard, snakes have that split tongue and they smell with there that. So that, uh, so I, snake. I, a snake, and they're very related because basically, if she drew this and you were having in mind that it was um, a, a lizard, and give me the pen a second, another pen. So, um, if you had this and and you had in mind you were drawing a lizard, you could still have that. And then if they didn't guess it, then you could put a couple of little legs on it because that's pretty much the difference between snakes and lizards. I mean, there's a whole bunch of differences, but for this game, that's sort of a way to differentiate and tell the difference. Okay, so that's um, it for, do you have the picture of a snake to show them that tongue? So we probably have a picture of the snake somewhere for you. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Okay. okay. Do you want to cap this? Is the cap over there? I got it. Okay. So um, 
we're done drawing. You can go on with this game forever, and I, I like it because it does make you think about the animal. Um, and in fact, if you have animals in your yard, which I'm sure you do, even if you don't have someone there to play the game with, you could practice up. So you could look and say, well, oh, there's a bird. That's like, we have the robins coming through right now. I don't know how they do it, but they just like fly down, land on the ground and pick up a worm right away. So you could draw the bird, you could watch them, draw that shape of a bird. And then if you wanted to get the clue, you could draw a worm being stretched out of the ground. And that would be a really good clue to people who have also been observant to say, oh yeah, it's gotta be a robin because wow, do they get those worms? How do they do that? Like more than any other bird, other birds will go and get bugs and stuff. Those robins love the worms and they know where they are. So, um, so you can play with that. You might have deer coming through your yard. This morning, I had four deer right outside my door, which I was told by my two dogs who wanted to go and chase them, which I didn't let them do. But so then you can draw them, uh, you know, and, and sort of learn what it is that makes that look like a deer versus a dog, you know, because there's some similarities. But the ears are key with the deer because they have those long ears that stick up, dog's ears flop down. So you can kind of play with that. And if you have a dog and a deer, you might draw them side by side and sort of see what the difference is in your drawings. What I wanted to do next um, is, as we're thinking about these wild animals, it's really important to understand that they are wild and what that means. And so we in the park have a rule of thumb. The, the, the expression of rule of thumb means it's kind of what we go by. Uh, so if, if, if somebody said to me, you want a cup of coffee? I said, yeah. And they said, how many sugars do you like in your coffee? And I might say, oh, as a rule of thumb, I like five sugars, which of course is way too much sugar to have. But the rule of thumb means, oh, that's kind of what we do. Well, there's a rule of thumb for how far away from wild animals you should be. And the reason we call it the rule of thumb is we use our thumb. So hold up your, I'm gonna see if I can get this in the right way in the camera without knocking orca guy here down. So the rule of thumb is you hold out your thumb and you kind of squint and look through with one eye at your thumb. And if I do that here, and I line it up with my head, I block out my head when I'm about maybe four feet away from my head, right? So this, uh, something this big, if I was four feet away, I block it out. And the whole rule of thumb is you hold it and you look at the thing at a distance. So I'm gonna go like this and I say, okay, I'm looking at that and I move back until I block it out. And by doing that, I the bigger animal, the bigger the animal, the further back I have to get. And this is something you can practice and should practice. Just go out in your yard and, and try it with a bird. How far away from a bird should you be? Well, if you do it and a bird is about the size of your fist, you'll figure out that, okay, maybe it's like, three feet to five feet, something like that, away from a bird. And that makes sense because birds really, you know, they're not trying to attack us and they're not going to hurt us in all likelihood. And so that's a pretty safe distance. If you had a grizzly bear in your backyard, remember last year, uh, the bear that came over from Lummi to Orcas to San Juan Island and Lopez, and now it's back home. So if you had him in your backyard, he's much bigger. You'd have to go quite a ways back. In fact, probably it wouldn't fit in your yard uh, or you wouldn't fit in your yard if he was in your yard. So you don't want to mix with those big animals very closely. And so we have that rule of thumb and I want you to practice it. So I'm going to, you know, so for example, a deer is a good example of why we need that rule, even though you look at the deer and you're like, oh, they look so sweet. Like this morning we had a little baby deer with its mother and it had the spots and it was so cute. And you just want to kind of go up and hug it. Here's the thing. If an animal is with its mother, a wild animal is with its mother, that mother is going to get very aggressive. And so even a deer that looks as super sweet 
and a deer that you maybe it's a deer that you've seen all year and it, you know it's sweet maybe even you you know you gave it an apple once and you know there's no harm done sort of we'll talk about that some other time but so you maybe think you know that deer or that that wild animal you don't know them when they're wild they're wild always and so what happens is if the mother sees you with her baby or near her baby and you think well she's friends with me she's, her baby would be friends that's not how it goes she's very protective and deer even though they don't look like they have a lot that they can do to hurt you with the the female deers have well all deers have very sharp uh hooves and they will go up and jam you with those hooves and it'll cut you and it'll hurt so you you know you don't want to underestimate what they can do and so even if sometimes you think they're friendly you never know with male deer it's even worse so there's in the season when they sort of the rut season when they sort of start to the males start to try to get a girlfriend and and do the family thing they the males will fight each other they have that's why they have those racks and they they tangle them and they you know get their their antlers all tangled together and whoever's the toughest one sort of wins and gets to stay there and everyone else has to go and find some other place to be in that part of the year they're really they can just turn on you and get super aggressive all of a sudden so we have some out of jones island that people feed them uh, fruit from the orchard and then they get really irritated and if they do they can poke your eye out with those antlers so again even if it's a an animal that you think you know and you've seen it before it's come through your yard a lot rule of thumb you just got to stay that distance and so it works pretty well if you think about it like if you had a little chipmunk and you do that how big is a chipmunk you know you could probably be five feet away from a chipmunk but you do the rule of thumb and that'll tell you because you've got to block it out when you're looking through that one eye at your thumb you block out the thing that's a good safe distance so the bigger the animal the further back and you have to be pretty far back for a deer and i know it's tempting to go closer but don't you don't want to do that it's just not good for the deer and, and certainly not good for you um so and a, here's a way you can practice too like you can practice in your yard and so forth and then if you're um, say your mother, I used to do this with my mom, and she'd say, you know, I am so angry. You haven't cleaned your room, and I've asked you to clean your room like eight times, and it's a mess. You go, oh, mom, because she's kind of looking like a wild animal at that point. Hey, yeah, mom, <laughs> rule of thumb, you know, you got to stay back. It just, you know, gives you a little protection. But then I would recommend just going and cleaning your room because they might not think that's i think that's funny to do that my mom thought it was funny she kind of you know but i'm just joking so but practice the rule of thumb practice it with your friends practice it on any animal you see anything a little bird a spider last week we talked about spiders so how close you know if you if you if you do that this is this little spider it's a wire spider i don't know if you can see that very well so wire spider that I made for last week. And so a rule of thumb, if you do that, I could block that out when I'm, okay, about three and a half feet away. And that works for something this small. They're probably gonna run away. They're not gonna run to me. It gives me a room to be safe from a spider, even though some spiders, you know, you wanna keep some distance. You don't wanna touch them. So it works for everything, small and large. And um, and that's the rule of thumb. So that's all we've got for today. We want you to use the drawing skills and, and practice your drawing skills and your powers of observation on whatever you see. Um, and that'll help you understand, uh, you know, the animals in your yard, as well as the animals when you come and visit us in the park. So um, thank you so much. I think Caitlin wants to say goodbye too. And um, nice to see you guys this week and we'll see you again next week. Bye, guys. It was really great joining you this week, and I hope you really liked our drawing game, and we'll see you soon. Oh, thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Did, uh, could you hear us well oh, enough? Yeah, we was... and we will make sure that we check in with you next week. Perfect. And, um, and I know you'll have something very fun planned for us. You always do. We will. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, that takes advantage of uh, things we have in the park, but also the park and that everyone has in their own yard. So we'll figure something out for next week, you bet.
Great. And everybody else who is with us, thank you so much for joining. Again, thank you to the Family Resource Center for um, sponsoring this episode and the Community Foundation. Tomorrow, we have a really special episode. We have Miss Molina from the Public Library is going to be joining us with resources on the topic of diversity um, for kids and for teens. And we have a whole bunch of resources that she has just been putting together for us so that we can always be ready to learn. And so that's gonna be tomorrow. And on Friday, Darlene Nixon is coming back and she's gonna be blowing glass beads. So that should be really exciting too. So until then, um, we will see you tomorrow and always be well, of course, and always be ready to listen and learn. Bye-bye.